now taking steps to heal yourself and to move forward and to grow, that's, that's the best thing you could definitely do. If you have a why, it doesn't matter how. Hey, what's up, everybody? Paul Tully with the FYI Podcast. Welcome to another episode. We are sitting down with Amanda Rose. Amanda is an incredibly talented, passionate artist. Uh, I had the uh, pleasure of going down to her studio in LA, and I was blown away. And we're going to jump into not just Amanda's art, but who Amanda is as a person. Amanda, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I'm super excited to have you. I'm really excited to be here. (laughs) It was, um, it it feels like you're the first, let me see. Yeah, you're the first guest that like I went and got to meet and do B-roll with first and then interview later, uh, the first time, because every other time I've interviewed people and then did the B roll later, you know, so that was pretty cool. Like to come, but it was cool because now I kind of feel like I have a little insight of you and your art. So it was, it was a cool process. Give us a little tour what's happening with these, these, uh, paintings, the bigger here. pieces yeah. here. So this piece is called Cosmos cosmic creation. You know, when you put all like, the anger, the sadness, the happiness, the envy yeah. together, and then it just turns black, like yeah. muted. Yeah, yeah, that's crazy. Cosmos, cosmic creation. Wow, Oil that's... and acrylic, five by nine feet. Wow, it's mm-hmm. beautiful. Thank you. And then what do we got going on here? This one's more about what I've gone through, like living in LA as a younger woman. Maybe you see this one face here, like whispering sin into this creature's like ear, and then all of a sudden, He's like, his spirit is coming out to life. So this piece, it was very interesting. So I made this in college. I graduated like a year ago from Art Center in Pasadena, majoring in illustration and fine art. So my last term at Art Center, I created a project for myself to do more like hands-on craftsmanship. Wow. In, into the purple greens. I love this. This one's great. I mean, your your paintings and your art are so like uh, powerful, and if I could say a bit dark, and you know, I mean, it's not dark when you first see it. It's until I start talking about it that you're like, whoa, okay, what's going on? Yeah. I think at first glance, you're like, okay, this is a shock. Like, what's going on here? And you start asking questions. Not just you, but anybody that has seen my work. And they're like, okay, is this really how you feel? Is that, did this happen to you? I'm like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, looks, don't judge a book by its cover type thing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, um, well, let's start a little bit about where you where are you from. Are you from California? Yeah, so I was born and raised here. I'm a valley girl. New York was great. I got to meet a lot of great people and other fellow artists. Um, that were global as well, not just from the States. So, so let's kind of dive into when you started finding your voice, I should say, as an artist. And I mean, does this go back to childhood? What, what drew you to painting? All kind of started in second grade, I guess, doing like portraiture and very strange environmental drawings and with animals and fun things. Uh, but it wasn't until high school that I realized I could really draw or had a skill. Freshman year, I was doing this demo and we had to copy the, the teacher exactly. And I drew it just as good, if not better than her. I was like, where did this come from? <laughs> so that same day I go home and I like Google search everything I can online. I just start copying and I can almost to the T of what I'm seeing online. And I'm just like, OK, we got to go with this. I never thought I would do it professionally or even be a fine artist at all in my life. Cause I was just like, how do you make money with that? Like, yeah. just, it's <laughs> just a dead end, you know? And, uh, senior year in high school, I had to do this project, senior project thing. And, um, so I went into my Philly friends company. He co-founded an advertising company and I went in and interviewed everybody within the creative process and within the business process. And I stumbled upon this one guy um, who's now my mentor to this day. He helps me so much. 
he's the reason I went to college for art. He's like, yeah, just go. And once you graduate, we can hire you, do something. I was like, okay, let's do it. And uh, a year and a half into school, I'm doing illustration, which is very editorial and very commercial. And halfway through, I did an expressive painting. And I was like, this is great. <laughs> well, I think I need to do f like fine art and just like ride my own wave instead of this whole commercial industrial thing going on. Uh, even though that would be more stable in terms yeah. of life and yeah. career. It would um, pay. <laughs> exactly. You know, benefits and everything. But I don't know. I just felt it. And then... Um, the bigger pieces you saw, I actually did my last year in college. Wow. That's when I was like, okay, this, I'm on the right track for sure. Now, when, when you're painting, when you're painting a piece, do you know what you're going to paint when you're doing it? Or is it something that comes as you're going? Well, typically, no. I have no idea. Um, especially when I was trying to find my voice, I would quite literally just scribble on the canvas and start pulling out figures and things I could kind of refer to or just recognize out of the scribble. And I, I did notice you have a lot of color. You have kind of a color pattern that you go with and and it's it's pretty thematic through yeah. most of your stuff. So is that more of a, is that what they would say is like your calling card? Or it, in a way, I feel like I would have two calling cards in because I have one very like black, white, and beige, and then yeah. one that's like super eccentric and prideful and using all the <laughs> yeah. colors in the rainbow. Um, so that, I guess, it's kind of pre preconceived to with the color, I would want to put more emphasis and like effort and time into rather than like the black and white is a slightly quicker process. Okay, with the painting. How do you get by? I mean, I've definitely been affected by it and had some very stressful months. Mm. Um, this is going to sound very strange because it's like kind of trending, but honestly, <laughs> being slightly delusional <laughs> helps. <laughs> like just believing like it's going to be okay. Oh, yeah. And like shutting out, like, yeah, I might be struggling, like, I don't know how I'm going to pay for rent tomorrow. Like, like, we need a hustle right now. And, like, we need to find some people and reach out to some people, you know? Yeah. And, you know, get a painting out or, like, just find a new job and, you know, half now, half payment now, half later. Um, but also just trying to manage money. I, I love that you just said delusional because <laughs> I'll tell you what, Amanda. No, that's, it's true. Yeah. I think that especially artists. But, uh, I mean, you could say it for anybody, but especially actors, painters, musicians. I think I always say that you have to have a level of delusion and yeah. you're doing what you probably feel you need. I don't know. Do you feel you have to paint? Like, I, what if, if you're not painting, what's happening? I honestly do feel like I have to paint. Aside from, because sometimes I do get very, very tense when I have to paint. Um, and strange and doing very well under pressure. So like, due dates coming, there's show coming, or so, uh, commissions. It's more beneficial for me to almost wait last minute and like knock it out because then there's less thinking. There's more just having to do. Mm -hmm. um, but I feel like I have to pay it almost like from the people rather than myself and it's a strange thing because yeah. even when I started painting and I knew it was going to be very difficult like from the jump I had to prove to my parents like I said something one time I was like hypothetically speaking let's say I sold a painting for 50 grand my dad's like that'll never happen like what what makes you think that would never happen I just kind of wanted to see his reaction it, like, lit the fire yeah yeah I was like what makes you think that would never happen and now they're like oh, I can't wait till you sell a million dollar painting because it's, it's just having to grind and kind of prove like my skill, my mindset, my passion, not even, not my mindset, just my motivation yeah. and how serious I am about it and how much work and studying I'm willing to put into it. I've definitely prioritized like a work-life balance um, 
and just with traveling and going out and, you know, acting my age responsibly and uh, just so I can kind of recharge and grow inspiration Um, because I don't always want to talk about the same exact experience over and over again. Yeah. I want to be able to paint along my life journey as well, not just be stuck within a specific time in my life. Dealing with that same whatever, maybe trauma or something that yeah. that inspired something. Let's talk about one of your paintings. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about one that I had saw. Um, I felt there was a there was a story we didn't really fully get to dig into, but you kind of <laughs> so. you kind of brushed along this the edge of what it was Mm -hmm. but um talk to me about that what the importance of that message for other people or do you think it's more important when you paint a piece like that that it's doing something for you therapeutically my position in my life was that piece is a perfect illustration of it and like I am that girl submitting to whatever you know I have to do to kind of survive or get by. So within that piece, I didn't know I was talking about, you know, the stalker situations I've gone through, talking about living within a man's world. I didn't know truly what that meant or how it felt until I made that piece because it told me like, this is what you've gone through. And it, even showed me because you know when you go through something very traumatic and you're like well you're it's kind of a shock and you don't there's no term to put like oh maybe I was sexually assaulted or maybe I did jeopardize my safety and my family's safety with certain people stalking and you know threatening my life and (laughs) having to do all these things but seeing that piece, I was like, wow, the amount of things you've put up with and had to just accept and not even able to fight back at in that moment, it just like hit. I was like, wow, you went through that. That's strange. And and this was like a year after when I made that painting that I realized all these things. Because when you're going through it completely alone, no one's telling you what's exactly wrong. You just feel like it's wrong. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah. And like your intuition kicks in like you shouldn't be here or this isn't right. So was this more like a, um, to be a little more specific, like more like a grooming type of like a, a, a mentor took you into the wrong direction or? Some people would, oh, I know these famous artists I would love to introduce you to. Uh, you should come with me to this party. I have friends I could introduce you to. When in reality, they don't know that person. There's no one at the party. They're just interested in me. And one thing leads to another. And yeah. that's assault. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, and so the, when I started making these large paintings, it would just come out like intuitively I wouldn't even try to talk about these things I I never wanted to talk about these things you know like you just kind of suppress it and shut it down I don't know maybe I tried talking to one person about it a guy unfortunately I shouldn't have talked to a man about it I'm sorry but men just don't understand did he start well, mansplaining you no he was more like why would you put yourself in that position All right. and I'm like I'm 19 I don't know what I'm doing I'm just you know thoughtlessly trusting this person giving them the benefit of the doubt thinking my they'll help my art career or right. just help me introduce get introduced to certain people that would help me but um yeah no it's a tough thing too right I've, I've talked to some people that say that had similar stories and they end up in these like really bad positions and then it messed at least from the conversation i've had with uh with one of the guests that was on the show one time, they had got sexually uh, assaulted. Mm-hmm. And then they said they battled for years with the the guilt and the thought of, did I want it or not want it? Like, they know they didn't want it, but there was this weird guilt of because they put themselves there, mm-hmm. which is like a horrible thing to have to even debate. It's like, clearly you don't want it. Well... But, I mean, of course. Right? But and there's that, like... 
No, because you always think, could I have changed something? Right. Could I have put matters into my own hands and like avoided this? Could I have just said no? Mm. Like, and I've said no, which is weird. A position I was in, I, I was being blackmailed for something and it was, it wasn't even like a blackmail. I didn't even do anything. He just wanted, you know, to get some. <laughs> and, yeah, yeah. And I was like, no. He's like, well, if you don't, I'm going to expose like you partying and like he took pictures of my IDs, took videos of me like drinking underage and doing other things <laughs> and like mm. nothing too crazy, but yeah. you know, just things Stuff you don't you want, wouldn't out. Have want it out there. Yeah, no. And especially as like, I was 20, yeah. I'm like, Oh my God, don't do this. Like I'm still with my family. This is going to ruin my life. I'm in college. Blah, 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 blah. And so you're kind of forced in these situations thinking what you're doing is right, even though you know it's not right, like to protect yourself, how to survival. So with him, I literally told him, I was like, I hope you know, this is like, I am saying yes, but it doesn't mean I want to. Like, mm -hmm. I'm agreeing, but it's not consensual, which was the strangest thing. Cause it's like, you could have just left, but it's like, no, I felt like I couldn't. I, I felt like I was trapped. And then even ha going through that, he did everything. He, he still exposed everything and wow. like sent people to my house. And I was like, so that was all for nothing. Like I, like wow. I didn't have to do anything. Yeah. And it, I would have still had the same consequence. So having to go through that was just very strange. And what's even crazier is I didn't even know that's technically, ugh, I hate saying this word. I didn't know it was even technically rape until yeah. I met a friend. And, um, sh and cause, yeah, if you're just like s staring at a wall, like kill me. Like I'd rather be dead like right numb. now. Literally it's humiliate. numb. Humiliated everything. And, but it's out of survival, so it's like a shock thing. Yeah. Thank you for opening up and trusting the platform and me to even talk about this very personal. So at any moment, if you feel like feel like we could avoid any question. Um, <laughs> no, no, no. I am more than happy to share, and I'm very healed from everything, fortunately, with years of therapy and great friends. <laughs> so feel free to ask me anything. Yeah, I think I – yeah, and I also for, like, other – women out there men everybody but especially young women who yeah. it seems like um the more i talk to people and interview people literally um i've done three interviews mm. today literally the first young lady that was on here talked about you know same being raped being molested as a child mm -hmm. and i'm like this is a serious problem yeah. like that that i mean how, it can't be a coincidence how many especially women have this experience yeah whether it's from a child or mm. as a woman yeah you know i mean well it happened to me as a child too <laughs> I, but yeah. um what was I going to say? I mean, it happens to men too now. It's starting to be absolutely like men are starting to talk about it more, which is great, but not, of course. Um, but no, it's it's strange. I, I but this still is going, think, though, I still think it happens to women on a, a larger it scale. It definitely of happens to men, and I've interviewed yeah. also men that, yeah. but on women, it seems so incredibly common. Like I said, not just from being assaulted as a child uh, but if even women who weren't assaulted as a child will say you know what i've been or, and not all had been raped but just assaulted or sexually yeah. harassed yeah. or just it's just like an that's endless that's just like one of my 20 stories <laughs> wow like growing up i mean i don't it probably happens in every city but that's one of them i mean a similar thing happened with not similar but like I was dating a guy and he wasn't loyal. So I tried to stop seeing him and he like sent people to my house. She's so like, no, you're not allowed to stop seeing me. I'm like who poked at your little ego, sir? Yeah. Respect my decision and move on, please. And yeah, no, that was very strange. Like we saw Scary. you leave your house. So we're going to come kidnap you and beat the out of you. 
Like, we're going to send our girls and you're not even going to see it coming. Like, you better not go home. I didn't go home that night. I went straight to the police station. My parents were like, what's going on? This, yeah, I was just saying that. I was like, I'm sorry, I did. Th-. And this was all while I was living with my parents, which was, like, the worst thing. Yeah. Because then I'm not only putting myself in a bad position, I'm putting them in a bad position. Now, you mentioned your childhood. Was, was, was this something that was close to home or...? Yeah, it was in in my house, in my room. Not family, thank God. <laughs> Sorry, that's not funny. But thank God it was not family. It was, a, it was a friend of a member. Of a family member. Yeah, of a... But an adult or also a young... Girl? I was I was at least eight. He was like 16. Wow. And he knew what he was doing. Like, come on. <laughs> oh my You're practically an adult to an eight-year-old. <laughs> you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. So... So this yeah. is something you've been dealing with but it's, your whole life. Yeah, it's it's strange. I mean, when I was a kid, it's funny because I didn't, I didn't know it was wrong. So it was going on, and it wasn't until one time I got this feeling, and I was like, no, like this, this needs to stop. So my first time telling a man no, I was like seven or eight years old. Like, no, I don't want that anymore. Like... Can we stop? Uh, it's like you don't even you. Can, you're, there's no intimacy in your brain. No one teaches you any of those things. Maybe now more. I think I saw a video on like sexual assault with some like kid and his uncle in class one time, and that's probably what triggered me. Like, oh my god, should you tell someone? Like, of course you should tell somebody, but I couldn't. I just felt like I couldn't. It was. Um, Hmm. What, what held you from telling know. somebody? Did you feel like, uh, like, did you feel like uh, it was partially your fault? Or yeah, I felt, I felt like I'd get in trouble, because as a kid I would always get in trouble for something. Mm-hmm. I had ADHD, and you know, I was just very misunderstood as a child. So I'd have some tantrums. I wouldn't want to do certain things. I'd be forced to, aside from like the trauma stuff like let's say like karate or doing sports so I felt that I would be treated no different in this case Mm -hmm. from my parents specifically and um, it's very unfortunate because I knew it was funny because I would go years without thinking about it and then I would think about it and I'm like whoa you went a while without thinking about it this time but it never it, I, I feel lucky that it didn't, af- it didn't gravely affect me. Yeah. Like it wasn't traumatic. It, it was just like, what? Like, Not, why is yeah, this, like, why'd this happen? This shouldn't have happened. I, I don't blame myself anymore. I blame my family, honestly. <laughs> Sorry. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's just like, how could this be avoided with my potential daughter in the future? You yeah. know? Just to keep an eye on things like that. Or teach children yeah. on how to communicate and spot certain things that may be wrong, you know, because you don't know as a kid. Yeah, you said something that made that stuck out to me was when you said you would always get in trouble for everything. And it's like maybe um, making our kids feel more comfortable to share anything. That's big. That's it. That's big. I like, can't even do that now with my family because <laughs> yeah. it's just judgment. You should be doing it this way. You did it, you know what I mean? And but it's it's all a process, and it takes therapy to be aware of certain things and projecting. You know what I mean? It takes a lot of work to be like selfless when yeah. someone comes to you. I feel, I mean, I'm not a parent, but I could only imagine, you know, if me going to my mom or something. The first thing she would do is act off fear and love. You know, yeah. it's understandable, but. It doesn't op- it doesn't form a comfortable, you know, relationship. Like, Safe zone, yeah. Yeah. It's pretty incredible that when people go through such hard times, it's what comes out of the fire, you mm-hmm. know. And you you're definitely growing to be so strong. And I wouldn't change a thing. I'm honestly extremely grateful for everything that's happened to me because of how aware and self aware I am to this day, and having a head on my shoulders. Yeah. So I wouldn't change a thing. So let's take that. Okay. So with all this and, and the, now you take this 
and you come into artistry. <laughs> so you paint with a passion. Mm -hmm. You paint with a, a bit of activism. A little bit. A little bit. Uh, you know, may. I touch on it. You touch on it. I mean, especially like with women's rights now. Mm -hmm. That's another part of my little story. But that's just started coming out, which is which very strange. It's a big strange. thing in the country now, coming on election season. That's a big, yeah. big topic. And Now, how, how have these experiences affected your relationships with men? Or your, the way you view men or intimacy with men? So, at first, oh, it was really bad. Like, I never wanted to get married. I even told my mom at like 18 19 i was like i might just be a single mother i can never trust a man like you ask they, they can't even do a simple thing you ask okay <laughs> no offense to you sorry but Undated. like i just i couldn't trust on a deep emotional level any true like monogamy or yeah. just getting to that depth that i can get to myself and my self-awareness um, and healing and everything. But with time, I was in a relationship for a little bit and it, it kind of helped me get through it. He gave me a lot of security, <laughs> um, and new experiences showed me different parts of the country and the world. And it was just fun. And it reminded me what love should be mm. and having a safe space. And so I kind of started believing in it again you know love exists and I think you can love someone as deep as you love yourself too so the more I matured and the more I healed and became kinder to myself and more confident and loving just to everybody that I was like I think I can manifest a partner the same yeah it's just having like benefit of the doubt there's a few of those fish in the sea Oh, there has to be. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure there's going to be tons for you. I hearing that makes me think of two things. Like um, two things you just said. One, it, it's so important. Like working on self and identifying self and mm. oneself's own, um, you know, uh, triggers and traumas. And and once you have that kind of under check, you can open yourself yeah. to other people's stuff. Going into therapy, I even asked, I was like, why do I attract this type of person? And she's like, I don't think you attract. I'm like, okay, don't lie to me. I'm here, like, trying to work on myself. Like, what is this about? And there was just a lot of self-awareness and, you know, finding my own triggers and seeing what was setting off with me and maybe what the other person was doing or certain traits that I would carry from guys that I would see from these different guys. I was like, okay, no, no, no. So then now meeting new people, I kind of like psycho evaluate. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, all right, are any of these crazy boxes in here? Cause you've been through this rodeo and you don't want to do it again. So it's definitely, yeah, things have definitely calmed down. It's <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Awesome. So, what's happening now? You got back from New York. Are mm -hmm. you back in the studio? Are you working on anything? A little bit. Not as much as I'd like right now. But uh, I recently just moved from North Hollywood more to like Brentwood area, which is oh. really nice. Yeah. So, I've been situating and been going around. Like, I'm trying to meet new people. Like, art, it's like 50% luck and 50% who you know. Yeah, of course. Like, making the actual thing barely even. <laughs> I mean, that's as a painter. I feel like it's barely even a part of the qu equation anymore. It's a matter of putting it in front of the right person and, you know. Yeah, I feel like, I mean, I see. I still, I still, oh man, I hope I encourage and hope that you still keep the focus always more on the creation. That's the magic, you know. If you have a why, it doesn't matter how, you know. So, like, my motivation and my purpose for wanting to succeed has always been maybe you know how many paintings I put out in a week it, it does change because my per perception or mindset changes focus like okay put the work into the painting this month and the next month now go out and like pitch yourself meet people work on marketing posts or do whatever yeah it's like that kind of balance because it's just 
a one man team here. Been through what you've been through. Oh, sought out the the work, the therapy, the and dealing with that, and then yeah. taking what you've been doing and applying it into your craft. It's incredible. It's Thank really, you. really incredible. It's remarkable, you. and you should be really proud of yourself. I should be. Yeah. <laughs> no, and I, I am, and I not as much as I feel I should be though. I mean, that has to do with just maybe how I was raised and like. Oh, nothing's ever good enough. N nothing. You're not as far as you should be. You know, that kind of inner dialogue yeah. is just putting yourself down. Like when I went to New York, it wasn't until it was over that I'm like, I was here showing. Nice. Yeah. Trying to be present and proud is definitely on my to-do list. <laughs> and, and again, at 25 growing. or 24 to understand that. Yeah. You know, I didn't start. I didn't start. <laughs> comprehending that that con i didn't have that concept until i was already in my mid-30s i think uh, a lot of where my like optimism came from was those experiences i went through um there was a time hmm, like a lot of things happened after the stalkers and you know when my safety and my security weren't good, I'd go to my dad, I'd go to my older brother, and, like, they would freeze and not be able to do anything. I'm the one having to call the cops, like... And I was just, like, the, the masculine figure in this house is very strange. Or just, like, why aren't you helping me or protecting me? And I just kind of took a lot of matters into my own hands. Like, even when I was 20, there was this guy saying, for sex... I got pregnant and I was like, oh my God, no, like this is not happening. Um, of course he's like, oh my God, this is God like sending us a sign. We're meant to be together. I'm like, you're delusional. This is insane. And experiences like that, I really made me realize like anything is possible, <laughs> even out of pocket or not. And like you have to have faith and just I don't know the optimism I feel like as much control as I feel I do have in my life I don't truly and those experiences made me realize that and having and like praying and that faith is what kept me getting through it and believing that there was a light like a light at the end of the tunnel and that, you know, it could it could be worse. You're lucky it's not worse. Just do what you have to do, get through it. And it's strange how going through that, like, all emotions shut off. And you're just like, okay, I got to do what I got to do. Mm. And then get out of it. And this wasn't like somebody you were, like, had feelings for. It was just more of a casual. It wasn't casual. I was with him for, like, a year and a half. Oh. And then we we ended it very badly. So, yeah, I mean, that must be a really, I, really scary and tough decision to make, or? I, well, I'm liberal and pro-choice, and, you know, being 20, I knew I would not, it was no question in my mind that I would have an abortion. Um, it was just dealing with him and, like, the verbal abuse and yelling and, you know, I didn't tell Soul for like six months because I was so ashamed and I was like, my family can't know about this. No one can know about this. Like, I acted like it didn't even happen. And it's funny because after, it's not funny. I shouldn't say it's funny. That's how I cope. I laugh. You laugh. I laugh. I have to make jokes. <laughs> and so, yeah, when it was done, I like cried in my room for hours and I was like, okay, move on. What were you feeling when you were crying? I just felt so sorry for myself. Like, so sorry. Like, I was like, you shouldn't have had to go through this. Like, this shouldn't have ever happened. Um, I felt extremely alone. And, like, you know when a dog's down, you kick it. What's that saying? Don't kick a, do kick dog, a dog when it's already down. Time. Like, I felt like that from this guy. Because mm. I had to drive out an hour to do... I did the procedure just so when I walked out the doors it'd be done but the whole way back he was just screaming at me and I'm like staring out the window like do you know what I just had to go through and he's like crying 
the guy. He didn't want you to do it. No, he didn't want me to do it. I'm like, don't you tell soul. And I'm like in there talking with the daughter and I get a text from his mom and his mom's like, love is everything. Don't do it. And I was just like, what am I going to do? Move to Florida and like be a, I, I just, no judgment to anybody, you know, that d- can't. But you just felt like that yeah. wasn't right for you. No, not for me. I was just starting college. I was living with my family, like parents. I just got out of a, like an abusive relationship with that guy. I was like, this is, nothing is binding me to you. Oh, period. Wow. End of story. And he was physically abusive to you on top of all that? Not physically, more emotional. Verbally and emotional? Yeah. Just very, um, cause one of my triggers, I shut down when people yell, like I shut down. Mm. I just like, yeah. we'll just stare at the ground and you don't like con- conflict. Like. Cause I grew up with it. Yeah. I was, I didn't, I didn't tell anyone for six months. I just cried. That was a very shocked thing, but then it was strange. Cause I, then I met someone that like helped me through it and talked to me through it and told me that it's okay. It's a female or male? Yeah, female. female. My best friend now. I mean, it was a few years later we met because I, I held so much shame and not guilt, but just like disgust for myself. I just felt like, ew, why? Just, just about him, just about what I had to go through. And with my friend, it's funny because I met her through her uh, in college through an art piece she did and she goes how do you kill someone without killing them you rape them and then I just like start bawling <laughs> yeah she's yeah like, cause I'm like Jeez, you made so me re- dark. I know I was like you made me realize like things she's like yeah you don't you know when you're just head back like staring at a wall and you just completely zoned out and I'm just like <laughs> <laughs> oh my god I didn't know that's what it was like you're the first one telling me I've been through this and I didn't even know she's like do you want to talk about it I was like yes please like I would love to chat with you and I told her everything I just told you the past I don't know how long we've been chatting and she's like you know it's okay I was like what do you mean it's like everything you went through like you had to do what you did and like had to do like, you shouldn't feel any shame. Like, if anything, you're extremely strong for what you went through. And I, I was like, I am. And she just put it into perspective how I was a kid. And, you know, like, so no dumb. one's guiding you. No one's telling you it's going to be okay. You know, you're just kind of, like, winging it. Because back to the comfortability thing, like, I didn't feel comfortable going to my parents about anything. And yeah. You know, it's like, why would you do that? You're, you're in the wrong. Blah, blah, blah. So it's just like hyper independency. There's someone out there watching. Somebody relates with what you're saying. Mm-hmm. This is the moment of interview where I ask my guest to look into the camera, give a message, maybe um, a younger you that's out there. Oh, boy. A younger me. You know, you know what's best for you at the end of the day and what you're comfortable with or not. But if you've had this itch that something is wrong, it's wrong. It's definitely wrong. Now taking steps to heal yourself and to move forward and to grow, that's that's the best thing you could definitely do. Do not be afraid to cry <laughs> because I would never cry. And it's so healthy to cry. I could not stress that enough because when you cry randomly, that's a trigger and that, a trauma response that's not good. Go into nature. Get out of the house and try to do things that make you not think. It's very important because then certain things will pop into your head and, you know, maybe you'll see a flower you like on the side of the street. I don't know because a lot of these things that I've talked about made me appreciate a lot of the little things and just made me a happier person. Do not be afraid to seek counseling. (laughs) That is very important. Or like a therapist, I know therapy is super expensive now, so just like anywhere that, or even a friend, just talking to a friend that you deeply trust. My best friend now like completely healed me. I always say she's my paid therapist because I I would have never forgiven myself for what happened. Pray. Oh my gosh, pray, it works. I don't 
doesn't matter if you're religious or not any religion, just pray, ask for help from whatever's up there. I know some people don't believe in any of that stuff. And if you don't, don't listen to what I'm saying, but it works. It is so strange. There was one time I was, I was extremely depressed all last year and I started praying, like, please help my, my like my mental state. Please help me be happier. Please like anything to just cha- alter my mind and mindset. Um, and it just started happening. It's very, very strange. Very, very strange. But also everything is perfect and you learn from the worst. So it's a blessing in disguise. Oh, a lot of gems right there. Um, moving forward, joy. Joy mm-hmm. in your life. Is that is that present? Is it is it coming? I think so. Is it a work in progress? It's I mean, it's always a work in progress. How fulfilled do you feel all the time? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You're never completely fulfilled. And so, I mean, fulfillment and joy is very different. But I, I think I find joy in things now that I didn't expect to find joy in. Mm. Like spending time with my family and driving, petting my cat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like things that I do for myself that's just pure light, like light energy positive and always something that helped me find a lot of joy too is just always talking like don't keep the peace keep your internal peace open that throat chakra and speak your mind because it always makes me smile even like (laughs) yeah yeah. i don't even know just saying whatever i'm thinking i mean with a filter but it definitely helps because then yeah. you don't feel like you're cheating yourself, feeling yourself. So it makes me happy doing that. All right, love it. Well, I want to thank <laughs> you for coming on and thank you. and again and for you know sharing sharing your your history and, and your journey and and it's necessary. It is It's necessary. What yeah. you know, there's people out there definitely that. That um, I think your story is going to be relevant to. So thank you for being courageous and and sharing and putting some of those joyful gems in the world. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. People need to know they're not alone. That's for sure. For sure. And that it's okay, whatever you're going through. It's okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. I like that. Just do your best. It's okay. And do your best. I'm going to close this out here. So, guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. It's Paul Tully, another episode of FY Podcast. Uh, Amanda came on here very courageous today. She opened up. She shared a lot of stuff. She's been through a lot of stuff. I mean, this is a young woman who's, uh, you know what? It's it's heartbreaking what she had to experience at such a young age. And and it's it's went on throughout her life. But it's also... uh, optimistic and gives hope to know that she didn't just sit on these dark dark um moments she she sought help for it she got the therapy she did the work and it's a continued work in progress and that's one of the things i took out of this get the therapy work on things that are happening you know if you're out there and you're feeling alone and you're feeling isolated in a dark place you're not alone all of us are going through this thing called life is difficult really difficult and we all have different tragedies going on but we're not alone talk find the help um she's pursuing her dream she found the way to take her 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 dark dark history and find an activism for it and and, and put it into her work and her art. And I have no doubt that that work's going to hit the world and it's going to inspire someone out there that's experiencing the same kind of journey. Uh, so these are some of the gems I took out of it. And another thing, find joy. She just said, 25 years old, and she said, I'm finding joy in the simple things. Petting my cat, seeing her family, taking a drive. I mean, you know, these are wise words for such a young person who's... Uh, had such a tremendous life so far. I'm proud of her. I'm proud of you guys. 
is Paul Telly, FYI Podcast. You should never stress about the problems you be facing. Everybody in the mud on the struggle trying to make it. Look into the mirror and you see your motivation. Then you step into the world and you find your inspiration. I'm finding inspiration. And once I get a hold of it, I'll never get complacent. Look into the mirror and you see the motivation. Then you step into the world and you find your inspiration.